absolute state of Brit bong land, reported and investigated hate crimes in the UK. A dog pooping outside someone's house, a dog barking at someone, a bus driver's racist look, a dispute over a parking spot, and someone losing a tennis match. And guess what? Hate crimes are up 17%. Gee, I wonder why. And don't get me started on immigration. We've got 30-year-old fake refugees posing as 15-year-olds in our classrooms. Meanwhile, a genuine refugee facing genuine persecution in Pakistan is told she can go fuck herself because her presence in the UK might offend Muslims. Those 70,000 illegal immigrants who arrive every year, though, Come on in! Asia Bibi faces possible death for the crime of insulting the prophet by drinking from the wrong water fountain. Yet, who were we told to cry over? Who did we raise over 200 grand for? Some kid who was pushed down in a playground. Something that happens almost every day in virtually every school in the country. Potential lynching. Thousands of armed Islamists literally screaming out in the street for you to be executed. Versus a teenager who had water poured in his face by another teenager. And who dominated? dominated the headlines for a solid week. Of course, one of the benefits of being the least racist country in the world is that you get endlessly lectured for being racist. George, have you actually looked at the numbers? The UK is one of the least racist societies actually across Europe. Oh, thank you! Thank you so much! It's funny that you're a white man saying that. It's not like we're the only G7 country to routinely meet its foreign aid commitment every single year. 13 billion pounds. It's not like we admit over 500,000 immigrants into the country every year. It's not like Theresa May's about to sign on to a UN migration pact that greases the skids for tens of millions more migrants to arrive. While classifying criticism of mass immigration as hate speech, it's not like Britain was the first country to abolish slavery. It's not like our ancestors literally risked their lives to free black slaves in Africa. No. We're racist. So racist that in order to keep reminding us how racist we are, white fathers have to be ethnically cleansed from television commercials. But hey, at least we take care of our own, right? With a bitterly cold January just around the corner, it's not like homelessness has been on the rise for seven straight years, is it? Oh, but there's plenty of money. Tens of thousands of pounds to pay for a murderer who tortured and beat a man to death to get a sex change at taxpayer expense. Most of the people I've discussed this with think it's outrageous, one police officer told the Times. You can murder someone brutally, but while you're in prison, you're entitled to everything you ask for, no matter the burden you put on a stretch system because it might breach your human rights to say no. As former prison doctor and author Theodore Dalrymple wrote, a deep moral cowardice infects Britain. Morrissey. I knew you are. So do I. The Conservatives can serve nothing in modern Britain. In fact, they are the prime destructors of British heritage. Labour are no different. And then there's Brexit. Remain or leave you. I guess they never leave her. If you got a customs union, I bet it doesn't let ya. You gon' find another member and we'll miss ya. Let's just be honest, save some last minute miracle. Brexit isn't happening. But who cares about such petty things as sovereignty and democracy when there's a chance, just a chance, that we might have to wait a bit longer to have our coffee served in prep. To send them back. For anybody else here who works in London, who would be serving our coffee in prep? Who would be selling us our sandwiches in well, prep? The horror! Gotta top up those Euro trash wage slaves! When are we going to get a leader who isn't a national embarrassment? When are we going to get a leader who truly represents the interests of the British people? I am the king. I am the leader. I am the king. I am the leader. I wanna be Winston. And when are we going to achieve the epic victory royale over those who have sold us out at every available opportunity? Sold a paper. But at least we're starting to get the UK's rampant crime wave under control, right? I mean, it's not like police officers are being criminally prosecuted for chasing actual criminals on mopeds, is it? Oh, it's not like after a huge cover-up of grooming gangs in South Yorkshire, it's not like while there are currently 98 investigations into the response of South Yorkshire police to grooming gangs in Rotherham, that South Yorkshire police posted a tweet encouraging people to report insulting comments online that don't even qualify as hate speech, is it?
Oh, don't worry, because they've got plenty of time to investigate mean tweets, because it's not like only 9% of actual crimes end with a suspect actually being charged, is it? Uh, oh. But instead of spending money on more police patrols, the government, in its infinite wisdom, is spending money on pushing news stories about violent crime in London down in search result rankings. Yeah. Burying the news won't stop people from being stabbed and acid attacked. You utter fucking spoons. Pedophiles? Meh. Burglaries? Meh. Being offensive in your back garden? Prison time. Child using a toy Nerf gun in his back garden? SWAT team. <laughs> rates for offensive speech are up 900%. Good to know the really dangerous criminals are being caught, right? An Asian journalist visits London to sample its world-famous diversity. Within minutes, we walked by three other mosques which were vibrant and filled with young men coming and going. We passed a church which was closed and decrepit with a window that had been vandalised with eggs. We squeezed by hundreds of residents busy preparing for the Eid al-Adha holiday. Girls in hijabs gathered around tables to paint henna designs on their hands. All the businesses had a religious flair. The eateries were halal. The fitness centre was sex segregated. And the boutiques displayed modest outfits on mannequins. Pakistani flags flew high and proud. I never saw a Union Jack. But hey, besides all of this, at least London remains aesthetically pleasing, and isn't having its already ravaged skyline raped by a giant glass dildo. Oh. Please click the big red button to subscribe, it really helps me when you do that, and click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video.